All right, uh, if you guys watched the last video, uh, 762 by 39 versus 545 uh, long range armor penetration test, uh, you know we had gotten a newer level 3A panel and we shot that from uh, out to 550 yards, about 500 meters, uh, to see if we would get penetration with those rounds. And uh, we actually had some surprising results, particularly with the 762 by 39. Uh, by all rights, that round is subsonic by that distance and weighing in at about 124 grains. Uh, essentially, you have a, a low-powered 9mm. Uh, however, it is a 30 caliber projectile, pointed nose, and a bimetal jacket. And I was speculating as to why we got the, uh, the performance that we did get. And I was wondering maybe it was due to the bimetal jacket or or the uh, profile. Now I believe it's probably going to be the profile is going to be the uh, greatest contributor to uh, what we saw. So what we're going to try to do to see if we can kind of narrow that down is we're going to, here's our level 3A panel we had last time. We have our holes marked up. And we're going to step back to 200 yards and we're going to try to tag it with a M1 carbine. Uh, the M1 carbine fires a 30 caliber projectile, weighs in at 110 grains at around 1900, 1950 feet per second or so. Uh, so we're about uh, 15 grains or well, 14 grains off from our 76239. Uh, this particular uh, cartridge is loaded by Tula, uh, which does have the bimetal jacket. So the only real difference we're going to see uh, this is going to be the round nose profile versus the pointed profile. So both of these projectiles will have had a bimetal jacket. Both come in real close to the same mass, same caliber, and at 200 yards we should be seeing around 1200 feet per second with this round. So actually it should be a little bit faster than the 76239 was at the 550 yard mark. However, uh, with the slightly lighter weight, I figure we should be right up in the ballpark for uh, for energy levels and and just it should be really comparable. The only major difference should be the uh, the nose profile, uh, and we're going to see if that gives us a, a different level of penetration than we saw uh, last time. I suspect that it will. I mean, by all rights, a 30 caliber projectile round nose uh, at 1,200 feet per second should. I mean, it should be well within with this vested style. That's that's a real low power Tokarev basically. <laughs> Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if we get any different results. Uh, I think it should be interesting. Like I said, I, I really like to see why we got the penetration levels we got because I really did not expect that. Uh, but the results were what they were. So we'll best step it back to 200 yards. Try to tag this a couple times with this uh, 110 grain Tula manufactured uh, 30 carbine round and see what results we get. Okay, so we're down range at 200 yards. Um, honestly, I've never fired these uh, Tula manufactured rounds in this uh, little carbine. Uh, so uh, I just put the steel down there, fired a couple shots. Uh, had to lollipop the steel and got a couple hits. So I'm not exactly sure where they're hitting, but since the steel's about the size of the vest, hopefully if we just lollipop the vest, we'll, uh, we'll get a couple hits. Uh, but I'm really not even sure where this is hitting at this range. I never really shoot this thing at this distance. It's kind of a stretch for an old carbine. But nonetheless, we'll take a couple shots. Hopefully we'll get a few hits and we'll see what happens. I didn't see any dust kicking up behind the target, so I'm just, I'm not sure if I'm hitting it. I don't want to shoot it too many times, so uh, we'll go down and we'll take a look. All right, so we're down range, uh, and we did get our hits. Uh, we got one hit here, one hit here, and uh, one just under the vest here in the belly button. So it's not too bad for a, a 1942 carbine that's seen some use <laughs> uh, shooting Tula, but nonetheless. Uh, our rounds are there, so we're going to take the vest off and see if we got penetration. Now, I did not see dust behind the target. Uh, 
so I'm, I'm not sure. And I haven't actually taken this off yet, but let's see what we got. Okay, it looks like one round did pass through uh, where his pectoral muscle is. It must still be in the target. There was actually Kevlar stuck in the in the dummy there. And same thing for that one. Um, I don't see an exit. So my guess is the round is actually stuck in the, the rubber, because if it had exited, it would have came out of the tape right here. Uh, I don't see an exit. So, since we got penetration with our little carbine using a bimetal jacket, we're going to try a copper jacket. I uh, got some... Uh, some brass case ammo with uh, just regular copper jacket. So we're going to see if the copper jacket uh, makes any difference over this bimetal stuff. So we'll get this set back up and give that a whirl. Alright, so we're back down range. Uh, this time we're using the arms core. Uh, this is a copper jacket instead of the bimetal. So it's the only real difference we should see here. So we'll see if this makes any difference. Let's give it a try. Alright, I saw the vest flop there, so I know we got a hit. Uh, so let's go check it out. So, well, it looks like when we hit, it knocked all the tape off a lot of the ones that's marked. So, uh, however, so far everything been shot at this has penetrated. So, we'll go ahead and take a look on the back and see what we find. And, let's uh, so take this off. I feel the bullet. Okay, so <laughs> definitely had some back face deformation, uh, but nonetheless, there is a bullet in there. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, let's see if I could find if I hit it more than once. I know I hit it once for sure. Obviously, I couldn't tell if I. I'll have to take this over to the truck and check it out. All right, so we definitely have a bullet in there. Uh, I can't tell if I hit it a second time. Unfortunately, when the round hit, uh, it knocked uh, the tape I had covering the other holes. Um, so I'm, I'm just not sure if I hit it more than once, but there's definitely a bullet in there. I feel it uh, lodge fairly deep, it feels like, but it is nonetheless caught in the armor. So that's uh, that's actually pretty interesting. You can see right here was where that tool around came through, uh, as did, uh, well, I'm not sure where the other hit was, but nonetheless, uh, no none of the bimetal rounds are stuck. So. Um, I'm sure the profile of the bullet definitely has a, uh, a contributing factor in this, uh, but honestly, that's pretty surprising, and I, I can't say conclusively that, oh, it's the bimetal jacket that's making it harder to form the round, it's slipping through, but in this particular <laughs> test, uh, using this particular rifle at this particular range, so on and so forth and so forth, the copper jacketed round failed to penetrate this vest, and the bimetal jacketed rounds did. Uh, and there was no substantial difference 
between those two rounds other than the jacket construction so that's um uh, that's pretty interesting so i think what i'm going to go ahead and do is put this vest back on the dummy and i want to tag this with an uh lehigh extreme defender from the nine millimeter uh, it's also uh, loaded by Underwood. It's a plus P version from my Glock 19 with a threaded barrel, so it'll be the equivalent of a Glock 17. And see if that can make it through this vest, because I have used those on some other vests, and they give some pretty surprising results. So I, I want to see uh, exactly uh, just how good this vest is, because uh, that is pretty surprising. I really would have thought even the bimetal rounds would not have made it through this. Uh, but they did, although I do believe they are still stuck in the dummy. <laughs> but the copper jacketed round did not. So we'll go ahead and set this back up and tag it with the 9mm uh, and see if we get uh, some different results. Alright, so we got our uh, Underwood loaded Lehigh Defense uh, Extreme Defender for our 9mm, our Glock 19 with threaded barrel. So this will be the same barrel length as a Glock 17. Uh, we got a point picked out on the vest where there's no compromise. And we're going to fire this to see if it can punch through this vest or not, just to see. Uh, well, one, I'm kind of curious to see if this will make it through a level 3A. And two, if it doesn't, I know this is a high penetration round for a handgun, so that'll show also that the vest is, in fact, working properly. So it looks like we got penetration with that round. <laughs> I don't know if it made it out the backside, but yeah, we did get penetration with that round. That's pretty impressive. And this is rated level 3A, so. Uh, hmm. Let's see, maybe I could find a ball round in the truck that I could shoot it with, just a standard ball round. Let me go check and see. Alright, so I found a standard 115 grain ball round uh, in the truck for the 9mm. Uh, I didn't bring any extra ammunition other than uh, some defense loads, so uh, fortunately I was able to find one lying on the floor in the truck. So we'll go ahead and put it in the vest to see if we get any different results. So we're getting a little bit bonus footage today. Judging by how that bounced off the dummy, I'm going to say that that round is trapped in there. Alright, so after examining the vest, uh, what we found was uh, the round is still in there, which I expected the way the vest bounced back off the dummy. That's, that's usually what happens because the round isn't penetrating through, it's actually pushing the vest off of the dummy. Uh, and I could feel the round mushroomed out pretty darn good in there. Uh, it barely even tore the back of the lining. So unlike our 30 carbine round, which I can feel much closer to the surface on the back of the vest, it actually kind of looks like it started separating some fibers, but couldn't quite make it through the copper jacketed round. Um, the 9mm ball round definitely is, is, is stopped uh, well within the vest. Um, so a quick recap and, and some surprising results. I, I have to be honest, the long range armor test so far has been one of the more surprising that I've done. Uh, I, I fully expected uh, the, to get the, these rounds to stop fully in this vest regardless of the, of the, uh, the jacket material. I, I thought for sure the round nose profile uh, would stop in this at 200 yards because quite frankly we're, we're probably doing around 1200 feet per second by that point but uh, I'm I'm assuming due to the uh, caliber of the round the smaller diameter combined with uh, it looks like combined with the bimetal jacket we we got some extra penetration over the copper jacket now uh, there was still less penetration than we saw at the 7.6239 due to, uh, I'm sure, due to the round nose because more of the material was dragged into the dummy than we saw at the 7.6.2 where it kind of just zipped right through. Um, but nonetheless, we did get penetration with our bimetal. We did not get penetration with the copper jacket round. Definitely some interesting results. Our 9mm Extreme Defender loaded by Underwood, the plus P configuration. Uh, did penetrate the vest, which is actually a little surprising once again. I wasn't sure that it would make it through. I figured it'd go through a 2A, maybe a level 2, 
Didn't really know that it would go through a three. So that's that's pretty pretty cool actually. Uh, and our ball round from the 9mm stopped in the vest, well within the vest. So it does look like the vest was working properly, uh, that that was not really the issue. So some fairly surprising results. And also at the same time, uh, you know, the old myth goes during the Korean War that the 30 carbine couldn't get through the, the quilted clothing that the communists wore, or had trouble anyway, getting through the quilted clothing, uh, the heavy winter clothing. Uh, and quite frankly, I, I, for the life of me, can't really understand how that one started other than someone trying to come up with an excuse of why they didn't hit their target. Uh, you know, as if you couldn't miss your target in combat in those kind of conditions. I mean, come on. <laughs> but I guess it was a convenient way of not wanting to admit that you missed uh, because it's utterly ludicrous, this idea that this the quilted clothing would stop the 30 carbine at any respectable distance. This was at 200 yards, and we almost got penetration through our 3A vest with the copper round, and we did with the bimetals. Um, basically... If that for that to be true, it would mean that the the 7.62 Tokarev fired out of both the the PPSH uh, and other submachine guns, as well as the Tokarev TT-33, would would have been completely useless. <laughs> I don't even know why the Russians would have fielded such a weapon if their if their their winter clothing would stop it. It just doesn't really make any sense. Uh, the Germans certainly would have had a hard time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Russians would have been pretty much bulletproof on the Eastern Front against everything but the Mauser. Uh, so I don't, I'm not sure how that all started. You know, hey, I tell you what, if you're a Korea War vet and you actually witnessed when you, you know, a live communist soldier give himself up and, and when he takes off his winter clothing, out falls all a bunch of deformed 30 carbine bullets with maybe some little bruises or, so, <laughs> or something. You know, have you, have you seen something like that or... I don't, you, you better have photos or some kind of live footage because I don't know that I'm just I just don't think I'm going to be able to buy that <laughs> so I hope I didn't offend anybody with that but uh, I I think rational sane people will agree that that myth just really doesn't hold water <laughs> alright guys hope you liked what you saw uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time